Welcome back, Wealth Giants, to another episode. If you are new here, my name is Ryan. Welcome to my channel. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about five things that new investors tend to overlook when they start investing in the stock market. Now, me personally, I made these mistakes and I have regretted them. And that's why I want to share them with you today. If you've already been investing in the stock market and you have a good idea of what you're doing, these are still good things to implement in your investment strategy to protect yourself against the waves of life. And we know that this year has had some pretty big waves that have affected many people. So you probably know what I'm talking about when I talk about them. So let's go ahead and talk about this. That's a lot of talking. Now, the first thing I want to talk about <laughs> is the brokerage account. Now, when I first started investing, I was just excited to open an account. And so that's what I did. I opened up an account and I started investing. And little did I know that there was more than one type of brokerage account. And then I started doing a little digging and I found out you have the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA. And they are good for different types of people. Me personally, I use the Roth IRA, but you may want to use the IRA. Now, the IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. And you can essentially put in $6,000 per year, unless you're above the age of 50, in which case you can add up to $7,000 per year. There are some pretty hefty rules, so you want to look into those before you start opening an account and investing in it, but they are so beneficial that you should probably really consider it. Now, with the IRA, you are putting in pre-tax money. So essentially, any money that you put into the account is a tax write-off. You can use it as a tax write-off to say, hey, I put some money into this account. I want it to be written off so let's get my money back this is essentially for people who are making more money now and plan on making less money in the future and then you have the roth ira which is money that you are putting in post tax so you've already paid taxes on it and the tax benefit to this is that you don't pay taxes when you pull the money out now this is good for people who aren't making much money right now but plan on making more money in the future so that is the benefit of the ira now there is another account that many people tend to overlook which is very important and very easy money actually which is the 401k so if you're employed and your employer offers you a 401k and they offer a match then take the match because this is an automatic 100% gain on your investment, which is very good. Plus, they tend to follow the S&P 500, which gains around 7% on average per year after inflation. So you are essentially making a good advance in your investment and on top of that, continually in growing your investment over time. So that is another option. Now this leads to our second thing, which is the emergency fund. The emergency fund is very important because this is something that protects you against any sort of change in your life. Say, for example, a medical emergency appears or a family emergency appears or you lose your job or your car breaks down or some super serious thing happens to where you have to have money right then. Well, if you don't have an emergency fund, where are you going to get that money? You're more than likely just going to go ahead and take that money from your assets and sell off some shares, whether or not they are down or up. And when I say up, you're not quite to the point you wanted to be when you would sell those shares. So that is why it's important to have that emergency fund. I recommend four to six months in advance. So if you spend $40,000 per year, you want to have on average around 132 to $20,000 in a high interest savings account. That way it can kind of buffer against inflation over time. Now, the third thing I want to mention is if you are already starting a business or plan to start a business, guess what? Your business is the most important asset, and the most important investment you will ever make. A prime example of this is Jeff Bezos. Think about it this way. He didn't become the richest man in the world because he invested in other people's companies. He became the richest man in the world because he invested in his own ideas, his own vision his own business. Now, if business is not for you and you just don't have any interest in that and you just want to stick to investing, you can disregard this step entirely. But if you are interested in that, first, do the employer match. If you are employed, that offers a 401k match. Then max out that Roth IRA or that IRA, whichever one works best for you, and then take the rest of your money that you have built up and put that into your own business because that is going to offer the biggest return. Now let's go ahead and go into number four, which is pay attention to how much debt you have and the APR you are paying on that debt. 
These debts can include credit cards, auto loans, mortgage, student loans, or any other sort of loan out there. And the reason why I want you to pay attention to this is because essentially if you were to be paying more in debt because of the APR you are paying on that debt than you are making in investments, then you might as well just take that investment money and pay off the debt because it's like you're on a treadmill running as fast as you can, but the treadmill is still winning, so you're actually going backwards. All right, so you're not going forward, you're going backwards. It's pretty much my lame way of explaining that. So you want to pay off your debt. Now this doesn't mean don't invest if you're in debt because there's a good chance you're gonna be in your mortgage for the next 30 years if you haven't paid off the majority already. Then you might be asking, well then how do I know when to invest versus pay off my debts? Well, it's pretty simple. All you do is you take the APR of your debt and compare it to the growth of the S&P 500. The growth of the S&P 500 goes up on average 7% after inflation each and every year. So if your debt's APR is higher than 7%, pay off the debt. If your APR for your debt is lower than 7%, invest the money. Now, that's my personal opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, so keep that in mind. But then you might be asking yourself, but uh, Ryan, I'm up uh, 35% this year, or I'm up uh, 50% this year, 70, 80% this year, 100% this year. Guys, I'm up 100% this year as well. But at the same time, you have to realize that this is a year that is very abnormal to the market. Nobody's ever seen this kind of situation before. This is not going to happen every single year. There's chances that next year you might lose money. The year after that, you might lose money. The year after that, you might lose money. So keep that in mind. Don't think that you are better than the market. The greatest investor in the world, one of the richest men in the world, Warren Buffett, has made bets with people, basically saying, I bet you cannot beat the, the S&P 500 over a 30-year period of time. Guess what? He's winning. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible to beat the S&P 500. Me personally, my entire goal is just to beat the S&P 500. It's not necessarily to beat it by 10, 20, 100%. It's just to beat it because then I know that I'm making more than the actual market. Will I beat it every year? Probably not. Hopefully, though, through my research and all this other stuff, I'd beat it majority of the time and actually end up on top over the next 30 years and so on and so forth. And this is the fun one. Answer the question, why are you investing? Are you to become the richest man in the world? Or are you trying to be the next Warren Buffett? Are you just trying to make enough money to support your family in case some sort of emergency or some sort of life crisis occurs to where you're no longer able to support your family? Are you just trying to make enough to where you can retire at a certain age so that you can just relax for the rest of your life and enjoy life? I mean, those are the questions you should be asking. Now, according to Business Insider, if you wanted to retire with an annual income of $100,000, you would essentially have to have $2.5 million invested into the market. And if you wanted to retire with $65,000 a year, you'd have to have $1.6 million. And with that in mind, if you're making $65,000 a year, you would essentially have to save 25% of your earnings or $16,000 a year in order to meet that goal. And if you were trying to retire on $100,000 a year while you are making $100,000, you'd have to save again 25% of your income per year or $25.5 thousand dollars per year. So set your goal. What do you want to retire on? What do you want to live off of when you retire? And then figure out how much you have to save per year. I'll leave that calculator to those images that you saw on the screen down in the description below. If you want to check that out, go ahead. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out the channel a lot and helps other people like yourself find my videos here on YouTube. Now, if you want to see more videos like this and you enjoyed the content, please consider hitting that ugly mug over to my right. It looks just like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.